Yes, lads, welcome back to another episode of the Everton Career Mode. So I've got episode 19 for you today. And we'll start off with an enthralling Champions League encounter to try and see us through into the round of 16. We've got Borussia Mönchengladbach, who can only make the Europa League by the seams of it. So if they lose, I think Celtic automatically go into the Europa League, which is quite quite good for Celtic, I guess. But obviously we want we want Celtic to beat Real Madrid and then us to beat Munch and Flapjack. And then we'll actually go through and Real Madrid will go out and Celtic will come through. So um, we'll see what happens in there. We'll see the top scorers as well very, very quickly. But Ilicic, who's only scored about four goals in real life this season, although he's a baller, he's actually the top scorer in the league this season. Uh, not in the league, sorry, in the Champions League this season. Good for him. Um, Ajax captain Tadic is the top assister. And then we're not even on the clean sheet boards. Who cares? Who cares? So um, we'll go into the press conference. We'll see what bollocks they have to ask us and see what they have to say to us. It's always stupid questions. You always get daft with daft stuff which you don't need to talk about. I'm not even reading it right now, but I would know it's something stupid which has no relevance to the game. It's just going to be pointless. So um, yeah, I, th I think I think we'll beat Munch and Flapjack. We need to. Yeah, I've got Mikel Antonio though. Did score a double pass as last time, but we still beat him four two on the return uh, leg. So. Um, We'll definitely try and beat him this time. And we will start with um, with the stadium look. So uh, I think we are at the... I think it's Borussia Park or something like that. Look at that. I, that. That start, I love it. I love it so much. He looks like a baller. Not even Deli Ali. The, guy, the man in the hat looks like a baller. My, uh, my AI character. So yeah, I think we're at Borussia Park. I think that's what it's called. And we are against probably the, the fourth best team in Germany, I'd say. Pretty good team nonetheless. We'll see our team very quickly. Freddie Woodman starts in goal. We've got back four of... Uh, who is it? At right back. Is it Zubeldi at right back? No, Coleman, Godfrey and Dicker and Michaelenko as the defence. Gallagher, Zubeldi and Ali as the midfield. And then Richarlison, Ken and Nemecha as the forward trio. So we'll start with the first half in the 22nd minute. So um, we have Deli Ali running with the ball. He's looking for the through ball towards Nemecha and he finds him. And Nemecha finds the far corner. Brilliant little give and go by Deli Ali. And the finish by Nemecha was really, really well composed, to be fair. From the German youth striker. And he, he just to be fair, their defence is really slow. It's a very, very iffy defence, I'm not gonna lie. And um good little ball by Deli Ali. And we are indeed one goal to the good of I can't remember how many goals Nemecha scored in the Champions League now. I think I think he scored three now. Oh no, he scored four. Good for Nemecha. Good for Nemecha. Great signing. So, we'll pick back up five minutes after that. Marcus Tram coming down the line, crossing the ball in back stick towards Alison Plie. Plays the ball in the middle, and it's a great save from Freddie Woodman, the uh, Jordan Pickford stand in. And uh, he just keeps in the game there, I guess. Hoffman will go over to take the corner, though. Whips the ball in front stick towards Alcacer. But Woodman gathers comfortably. So, we're going to go for a straight kick now. It's a good ball towards Richarlie Dad, who turns his man. Gets past Friedrich, the former Union Berlin central defender. Easy shot, easy chance. He takes it too close. And Sommer parries it away for the final action of the first half. Disappointing. Tell him to be one up after that late chance by Richarlison. But um, not so, not too bad at all. So uh, we'll restart in the 55th minute. They're coming down the line. And Dicker comes across, tries to win the ball. Misses it. Antonio turns his man, plays it back towards Jonas Hoffman, former Dortmund man. They're playing football. Look at this for football. Near house. Looking for the return ball now. Back heels it towards Kone. Look at the football. Oh my days. What a ridiculous goal that is by Borussia Munch and Flapjack. How can I defend that? Honestly, it's horrible. But um, in the 63rd minute, we'll get... A, well, sorry, they'll get another chance. Antonio somehow beats the run of the uh, central defender. But we do make the save with Woodman. Just poor defending. It's just very, very poor defending. And I don't know what I'm meant to do about it, to be honest. But they are going to go for the corner. And Woodman again proving his stature with another good kill, another good claim. So 10 minutes left now. Nehaus running through the midfield. Finds Antonio with a 1-2. It's a shot across the keeper. It's a double save off him again. And this time, Woodman calls for it. And it's another good bit of keeping from Freddie Woodman. I really like him. Really good keeper. Now we've got Moussa Diaby attacking. He's got to beat Marcus Taram, whose dad was a really good defender, or so I'm told. Plays by the middle towards Deli Ali. 
chance for Kent. It's a save again by Jan Sommer. And, um, don't, uh, sorry, not Dortmund, Munch and Gladbach get away with it. And right at the end of the game, Nemecha plays the ball towards Kent again. And it's ricocheted off the defender onto the post, but they've got away with it. They really have. They've pulled a fast one on us there. We're really, really unlucky. Just depressing. Like we had so many chances in that game to try and try and nick a win, but um, unfortunately the game didn't see it that way. It didn't want us to. But you know it happens sometimes. You don't win. You don't. You can't win every game. You physically can't win every game. But um, hopefully on the back of that, we are still through. I don't think Celtic have got a good enough goal difference to trouble us. Although it would be quite interesting. Woodburn got the man of the match with an eight point nine rating. So good for him. Good for old Freddie. He's filling in for Pickford fantastically well. As a couple of viewers have pointed out, Pickford's out of the team now, which is which is great. It's great. It's great knowing that. I don't like him in real life either, to be fair. Can't save anything. He's absolutely useless for Everton. And um, only club he's really good for, if, if you call it a club, is England. So, um, I mean, on my England save, I didn't even call him up to World Cup because uh, why would you? Shower of shit goalkeeper. But yeah, we have made it through the Champions League. Celtic did beat Real Madrid the first time they played. Then they lost the second leg. 3-0. 3 0 I'm going to say 4-0. But yeah, 3-0. So we're unlucky for them, but they have made the Europa League. We'll have a look at the other tables while we're here, just, just while we're scrolling along. So Group A, Bayern Munich and Shakhtar have gone through. Severe have gone out. What the hell? And Galatasaray have finished bottom of the group. PSG and Bergamo Calcio, also not at Atlanta, have gone through Group B. Salzburg finished above Arsenal. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. And Arsenal lost to Salzburg both legs. So, um, Group C, Manchester City and Villarreal have gone through. Antwerp and Ajax finishing fourth below Royal Antwerp. That's very strange. Group D, Leipzig stormed past Bar uh, Barcelona to finish top. Then Benfica and Malmo finished third. Although it was tight between Barcelona and Bar uh, Benfica. Group E, Man, Man United and Piemonte Calcio go through. Group F, Leverkusen and Spurs go through Inter drop out to the Europa League and CSK in the uh, fourth place spot. Group G as well. Let's have a quick look at that. Uh, oh, that's us. We're, we're Group G. We are Group G indeed. So, quick look at Group H then because we already know who's in our group, which is us, of course, as we were really, really good um, against Real Madrid the first time we played them. And then Napoli and Club Bruges have gone through. Oh, that, does that mean that Atletico's out? That would be wild, absolutely wild. But we'll go straight into the second game of the episode now. It's better enough time looking at that. We've got the uh, Premier League top goals. Why am I? Why am I stuttering? Top goal scorer in Richarlison. Jesus, I don't know why I'm stuttering. Uh, Premier League top goal scorer in Richarlison. It's like I'm nervous, but I never get nervous. I've I've done this loads of times. I, I, I don't know why. But we have got the uh, trip to the Vital team. We are against AFC Bournemouth, as you can see on your screen. So the team, Freddie Woodman starts in goal. We've got back four of Captain Holgate, Godfrey, and Dicker and Callum Styles. Midfield three of Andre Gomez, uh, Alan and Damari Gray. And then a forward line of Richarli Dad, Musa Diabe, and the one, the only, DCL. So a uh, strong team, as always, as you should expect from us by now. And the, the team talk's been delivered by Alan. I love it. So we'll start with the first half of the game, 15 minutes in. Great through ball towards uh, Calvert-Lewin. He's got a little run on his man. Fires it past the goalkeeper, Koza. I thought it was Diego Costa then. The, um, or is it Diogo Costa, the Porto keeper? No, it's, apparently it's Koza. He doesn't look like him, but yeah, Koza's the keeper and he's already conceded. So, uh, good little run from Calvert-Lewin. And Calvert-Lewin does indeed beat Koza. To put us one goal to the good up. And then the next out of the game... We'll come in the 34th minute. So Bournemouth get a chance to own Ellis, the former Houston Dynamo man, forces Woodman into a cracking save with his ball sack. Honestly, look at this. Catches him. Oh, it weren't quite. It weren't quite. It looked like it. But good save by Woodman nonetheless. And the 42nd minute, Diaby's coming through across Koza, who makes another smart save to keep Bournemouth in the game. Richarlie Dad goes over to take the corner now. Looking for the big man in the middle, I can imagine, in DCL. Let's see if you can find him. He's got Kelly to beat. He beats Lloyd Kelly in the air, and the keeper tips it into his own net. What are you doing, you numpty? Oh, dear. Calvert-Lewin does a little handstand Kai Havertz celebration. And uh, I don't know what Charleston's doing there. He's literally, he's literally pulling his leg. 
don't know if you saw that. That was so bizarre to see that. But yeah, Koza with an awful bit of keeping. Can't believe what Calvert Lewin just had done to Barry Charleston. That's that's a violation. That very strange. But that was the half-time score. Two goals to nil. That was all she wrote for the first half and uh, really positive signs. I know against Bournemouth, but oh well. It is still a team to beat. So yeah, we're restarting the 48th minute. Details looking for the through ball. Finds Damari Gray. And you know what's going to happen here. No mistake in my mind. He takes the piss. What is he doing? It is a skill shot. What is he doing? I thought I'd scored then. What are you doing, Damari, you silly boy? We do cross ball towards Dieter on the front post again. And this time... Just wide of the post. Very wasted chance by Damari Gray. But uh, 10 minutes after that, Diaby's making the run. Gray finds him. He must score. Come on, Diaby. Chips it back. Sink towards DCL. We go for the sweaty goal against Bournemouth. I feel dirty. I feel really, really dirty after that. That is... Um, that is very dirty. But, uh, yeah, good good bit of good bit of play by Diaby. Good forethinking. And in the 77th minute, we play the ball towards Richarlison, who takes the ball in his chest. He has Oliveira to beat, turns him super, super easily. Got so much space, 1-2 with Damari Gray. Plays the ball back to him, he's beat Lloyd Kelly already, and he's beat Koza to make it four. What a goal that is. The little pigeon comes out again, but what a goal. Richarlison is... He's something else, he's a special player. I love Richarlison. He does wonders for us, he saves us in so many games. And that was a great finish to put us even further ahead. And then right towards the end of the game, five minutes left now. DCL looking for the ball towards Diaby. Diaby beats his man yet again. He's looking for the finish now. Turns him again on the weak foot. Just wow. Honestly, I don't know what to say. Just, just wow. What a baller. Wow. Have you ever seen a better signing in any of my career modes? I, I don't know. I've, I've re I'm really thinking that he's one of the best ones we've had so far. But yeah, we do win the game. Great, great result indeed. And um, as you see there, it was the final score. 5-0 victory against this fairly good Bournemouth side, I guess. And um, the stats don't lie. We absolutely dominated them. It was a bloodbath at the uh, Vitality Stadium. Not so much vitality there, is there? We funny banter. Um, sorry. That was terrible. But, uh, yeah, we a great result. 5-0 victory against a decent Bournemouth side. United have beat West Ham. Watford have beat Sheffield United. They're just pretty typical results you'd expect on FIFA. Is it all right if we just ask you a couple and of questions? And they're asking me, is it, all right if I, is it all right if we ask you a couple of questions? Of course it is, darling. That's why we're here. What a very silly thing to ask. Why would I agree through the press conference if you're not... If you're not... If, if I don't want any questions. You need to re-evaluate re yourself and... And check yourself before you wreck yourself. You silly bugger. What is she on about? Can I ask you some questions? Of course he can. Very, very strange question by the uh, commentary lady. But great result again, as I said. And uh, we're going to go straight into the third game of the episode now. We're a very rainy and wet Goodison Park. And that's typical because it's Liverpool and it's um, one of them places, isn't it? But um, yeah, we'll have a quick look at the team. Woodman starts as our number one. Our back four of Kenny, Zubeldia and Dicker and Godfrey. Midfield three of Conor Gallagher, Alan and Dele Alli as usual. And then the forward line of James Holloway, uh, Demonic Calvert-Lewin and Moose Darby. Is he, his name's James. I've been calling him Josh Holloway all this time. What the hell? First half of the game comes in the 17th minute. They're coming down the line with the player's name I can't pronounce. Play back towards James Ward-Prowse. Looking for the inside ball now. Great pass. Who was that who scored then? Did it say Embuemo? He's come, he's left Brentford to go to Southampton. Wow, what a weird signing. So yeah, they're 1-0 uh, up already against us. We're already under the cosh. Then Jared Bowen, the former West Ham man, finds a lovely ball towards Umar Sadiq. No. Is this what it feels like to be betrayed? He was their friend. And he betrayed them. He was their friend! I just don't know what to do. I'm I'm literally devastated that Sadiq's gone and scored against me. I just find it I find it rude after all we did for him in the Fulham career mode for um, taking him out of Almeria for starters. And then him going back and repaying us like this. It's disgusting. 
But in the 41st minute, we do, just before half time, we do get a little chance of our own. Derby runs down the line with some force, looking for the front post finish. But just straight across the keeper. Look at that. That's what I mean. He's an absolute baller. I know 80 million pound baller. I've said it before. I'll say it again. He's an absolute weapon of a human being. Look at him just running down the line. You don't teach that. You don't teach running down the line with all the pace you've got. That's uh, that's only reserved for special players like Theo Walcott and Aaron Lennon. So uh, straight from kickoff, we'll try and go again. Try and get another goal before half time. DCL gives the ball away, unfortunately. Now Conor Gallagher's looking for the out ball towards James Holloway. I'm upset his name's not Josh Holloway, to be honest. And um, he crosses the ball in towards Deli Ali, whose header is matched by Flecken. Flecken. Mark Flecken. I don't know why I'm doing that voice. He's. He's from, he's from Deutschland. No, that's Germany. He's, he's the Dutch. He's from Holland. He eats Edam cheese. That's where he's from. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to leave it again. Train of thought's gone. But, um, yeah, a bit of a poor first half. DCL slowed it at the office. You can fucking tell me that again. A uh, bit of a poor showing for him so far. But uh, I'm sure it'll get better. So we'll restart again the 68th minute. Adam Armstrong or Stuart Armstrong, whichever one it is, plays the ball towards Bowen. And then the chance by Harvey Barnes. And he takes it past the keeper. What am I meant to do with that? Come on, what are we doing? By the way, my voice keeps breaking, but I'm doing it on purpose. I'm not a five-year-old. And we are indeed 3-1 down. And then the 75th minute without a score. I know what score it is, fortunately. Richarlison comes down the line, is tackled and thwarted by uh, Big Sally Sue at Southampton. We're looking for the ball in now towards DCL. Who gets up high, wins the header and fires it past Mark Flecken. The Freiburg number one now, obviously Southampton number one in this game. It's another goal for DCL, who's actually started to turn up a little bit now. He gets back in the game. Now in the 93rd minute, Allen makes a wonderful tackle. Looking for the out ball towards DCL. We need to score in this attack to get anything back in the game. A lot right on it. Richarlison's played through. Alatelli, Aguero! We've scored. He's made it three all. That is a wonderful goal. Was that Martin Tyler esque or what? No, sir. No, no, sir, it wasn't. Well, we get the goal, and that's all that matters. Wonderful bit of play by Richarlie Dad. We celebrate with him because it means a lot to us. We need to stay in the title race, and it's the hardest title race I've encountered in the save yet. Yeah. And uh, to get a point it means a lot more than a than a loss. Obviously, that's like such a stupid saying, but yeah, it clearly is. And um, great little goal by the boys. Very, very well deserved. I've already done my press conference by the sounds of it. I've just made an absolute meal of that. Um, but, I mean, I'd say great result. We're at home against Everton. You see Richarlison walking off the pitch talk, talking to Shane Long. As if he can understand Shane Long. Shane Long's got, like, the most corky accent going. I do not believe he can understand Shane Long whatsoever. Then again, Shane Long's probably from Reading. Because he's not good enough to play for England, so he went to play for Ireland. A bit like a reverse Declan Rice. Too good to play for Ireland. Went to play for England. Great result, though, as I said. Train of thought's gone again. Allen was fantastic yet again. Broke up the play for the final goal. Freddie Woodman wasn't great, but you can't blame a guy for being in the net when uh, all the goals are good. All, all the goals just they flew past him. And uh, I couldn't really do much about it. And um, Flecken, I mean, he looks like an absolute quality keeper on this game. He's six foot six. He's 80 rated. He's got a plus five rate in this season. I'd love him in the squad. He'll get a Bundesliga team of the season as well if that even gives away any leagues. But um, great result yet again. And I'm really happy for it. I'm, I'm really happy that we've we've managed to do it. Great win again. Great win. Great draw against uh, a decent Southampton side. They've got like Jared Bowen and Harvey Barnes. So I'm saying it's a good result because we were 3-1 down at one point. And uh, a bit like when Liverpool celebrated in front of the West Brom fans when they when they uh, managed to come back from 4-2 down and draw it's a bit like that it's just like an em it's an empty win because we drew but we didn't win so it is what it is but that didn't make any sense whatsoever but we'll go straight into the fourth game final game as well we see the Robert Sanchez Tifo and it gives it away we have got Brighton at the Amex Stadium I don't know why it's called that but it's a lovely name we see their team Sanchez starts in goal they've got back four of Lucas Klute Ostigard, Mwepu and Kukra is a back four. Van Hecken, Sarimento is the midfield three. Saucedo, Kozlowski. Um, and what's his name? 
Marishima as the strikers, along with Aaron Connolly. So we'll see our team as well. Woodman, Coleman, Zubeldia, Holgate and Marklenko make up the back four. Midfield three of Alan, Gomez and Damari Gray. Then the forward line of Diabe, Richarlison and Lucas Nemecha. So strong team again. We need a uh, we need a response from that draw. And uh, Woodman gives the team talk. Come on, Freddie. They can't understand you because you're a Geordie. We'll start off with the first line of the game. Four minutes in. We're in down the line with Koch Kochlovsky. I said his name terribly then. They get a ball played across. And Freddie Woodman, or is it Frankie Woodman? I don't know his name. Makes a wonderful save. So 21 minutes now. But Charleston's making a bit of room for himself. Plays the ball towards the Murray. Great easy chance. And the keeper makes a save. That is a very, very boring first half. I cannot deny that whatsoever. Nil-nil first half. Ooh. Not an interesting game whatsoever. So, um... We'll restart again. Demario Gray's been confirmed injured, apparently. I didn't take him off at all, though. But Brighton will get a chance. Connolly turns his man and fires it past the keeper. Oh, shit, it's the 85th minute. I forgot. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Aaron Connolly's put Brighton one nil up, and then the 92nd minute, it just gets worse. Coming down the line with Sean Clybert, sweaty, sweaty virgins. Fredman, Fredman? Woodman punches the ball away for no reason. Holgate... That's not even a pen. I, I'm not being funny. That's not even a pen, mate. I'm not having that. This ref's been bought. Someone's given him a reach around before the game. I'm not having shit like this in my team. I'm, I'm, I'm actually making accusations against this ref after the game. I, I, don't, I don't accept it. I don't accept it. If they score this penalty, I'll be livid. I'll be having a proper go at him at half-time. Half-time at the end of the game. Ooh. You're hard, showing off. Go on, you dickhead. Miss it. Miss it. They're, they're actually praying for you. That's embarrassing. Wepu steps up. And he's hit the post. Off the post. Come on, let's give us a chance at the end of the game. We play it forward. And he's blowing the whistle. This ref is fixing. I'm not watching these intros. He's match-fixed the game. And I'm actually mortified that he's got away with it. Not going to lie to you. They deserve the game. I don't give a shit. Play performances. We're well full over the park. There's no denying it. Sort of my fault that the team was that poor. But, you know, by the by... I'm just going to say, ref's fault, not my fault. I'm going to be like Mourinho. It was the ref's fault. That is exactly how he would say it. And um, I'm going to get like a £60,000 fine off the FA for saying that. You know what? I'll accept it. I'll accept it. It is what it is. But uh, we have indeed just had Freddie Woodman's goalkeeping development back. And he's he's gone up an overall. So that's his second overall he's gone up this season. I'm quite happy with that. He's been very good between the sticks. But I think we're going to get a new keeper in January. The next episode will be the January transfer window opening. And we'll have two goals there. We'll have two bites at the show. We'll be able to sell Jordan Pickford as well. As you can see, we've slipped five points behind Liverpool. Chelsea have caught us and City aren't far away. Just shit. Just absolutely shit. And then we see Spurs have climbed out of the relegation zone. No. What are they doing? We want them to go down. But we'll have the top scorer at the end of the episode. We see Mane's the top scorer. I'm not looking at the rest. I'm not bothered. Calvert Lewin's a top assister along with Dele Alli. Um, clean sheets wise, is there any reason to look? I think Woodman's got one now, and I know for a fact Pickford's got two. So we'll have a look into the next episode. We've got a game against Manchester City at home. We've got an away game against Burnley, I believe that says. Matt, sorry, my writing's really small. I can't really see it. Then we've got a home game against Wolves. To finish off with that episode, we've got an away game or a home game against Bremen. So I really appreciate you watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.